good morning to you all today lecture is the small and large intestine first we'll discuss about the small intestine the small intestine extends from the pylorus to ileocecal junction where the ileum joins the cecum it consists of duodenum jejunum and ileum as you can see this is the small in this part is the small intestine first part it is the duodenum and the pink color structure is jejunum and the last part of small intestine is the ileum in this picture you can see the duodenum and in between the duodenum and jejunum there is a flexure called duodenal jejunal flexure and after that the the ileum it ends ends with ends open in ends with open into the cecum in between the cecum and the ileum the junction is called as ileocecal junction duodenum is c shaped tube course around the head of the pancreas it is located opposite the body of l2 vertebra it is the first part of small intestine and most widest and shortest as a well last most fifth part of the small intestine duodenum is 25 cm long tube it divides into four parts first second and third and fourth the first part also called as superior part second part is called as descending part third part is called as horizontal and the last fourth part is also called as ascending part the first part of small first part of the duodenum is 2 inches long and located at the level of l1 vertebra and second part 3 inches long and it is on the right side of l2 vertebra and the third part of the duodenum 4 inches long and across the front of the l3 vertebra and the ascending part or fourth part of the duodenum is 1 inch long tube and it is on the left of l2 vertebra you can see in this picture the this is the du, this is the duodenum and this is the first part second third and fourth part of the duodenum first 2.5 cm of the duodenum is called as duodenal cap it is completely covered by the peritoneum that means the it is intra it is intraperitoneal structure located in between the lesser and greater omenta while others are retroperitoneal look at this x-ray you can see here this is the stomach stomach this is the fundus part of the stomach and this is the this is the lesser greater curvature and this is the lesser curvature of the stomach and these lines are called as rugae and after that the terminal part of the stomach is pylorus and after that starts the small intestine this area is you can see somewhat c shaped structure it is the duodenum and the starting point of the duodenum here you can see the duodenal cap the first part of the duodenum overlapped by the liver and gall bladder and as i mentioned earlier first 2.5 cm is intraperitoneal and it is called as duodenal cap immediately posterior to the 
first part of the duodenum you can see gastro duodenal artery common bile duct and the portal vein anteriorly the first part of the duodenum is related to gall bladder the second 2.5 cm of first part of the duodenum is retroperitoneal that means it covers front with peritoneum but posteriorly bare of peritoneum look at this picture carefully you can see in this picture this is the round structure is the first part of the duodenum immediately anterior to the first part of the duodenum the gall bladder and liver you can see the liver and as well as the gall bladder and posterior to the first part of the duodenum you can see the bile duct gastro duodenal artery and also the portal vein posterior to these three structures you can see the fold of peritoneum this is called as foramen epiploicum or epiploic foramen and posterior to that epiploic foramen you can see the inferior vena cava these are the anterior and posterior relations of first part of the duodenum second part of the duodenum curves downwards over the hilum of the right kidney anteriorly the second part of duodenum covers with the peritoneum and crossed by the attachment of transverse mesocolon and lie, lies on the right kidney and ureter the posteromedial aspect receives the common opening of the bile duct and main pancreatic duct at the hepatopancreatic ampulla or ampulla of wet that opens on the summit of major duodenal papilla it is located about 10 cm from the pyloric pylorus or the halfway along the second part of the duodenum in this picture you can see this is the duodenum this is the second part this or this vertical structure vertical part is the second part of the duodenum and you can see the opening which is called as duodenal papilla the pancreatic duct and common bile duct these two uh, opens into the duodenal papilla and also there are some accessory pancreatic ducts that opens open into the that opens that open into the first second part of the duodenum just above the opening of duodenal papilla the green color tube is the common bile duct and this is the pancreatic duct these two opens into the, these two ducts open into the duodenal papilla at the second part of the duodenum as you can see these are the anterior and posterior relations of the second part of the duodenum anteriorly you can see the gall bladder and right lobe of the liver transverse colon and also transverse mesocolon the green color structure is transverse mesocolon and also the coils of small intestine posteriorly you can see this is the posterior relations of second part of the duodenum posteriorly related to the right kidney and the renal vessels right edge of the inferior vena cava and right psoas muscle medially 
The second part of the duodenum is related to head of the pancreas and laterally you can see here laterally you can see the right colic flexure and right lobe of the liver. Third part of the duodenum curves forwards from slope of the right psoas muscle and reach the left psoas muscle. It is crossed anteriorly by superior mesenteric vessels and posteriorly related to inferior vena cava and the aorta. Upper part of third part of the duodenum is related to lower border of the pancreas and anterior surface is on contact with coils of jejuna. This is the relations of third part of the duodenum. Anteriorly, the third part of the duodenum is related to root of the mesentery and also superior mesenteric vessels and coils of the jejuna. These are the superior mesenteric vessels and posteriorly it is related to right psoas muscle the green color structure tube is right ureter and inferior vena cava aorta are the posterior relations of third part of the duodenum and also right gonadal vessels also the posterior relation of third part of the duodenum superiorly you can see the pancreas and inferiorly you can see the coils of the jejunum. Here also you can see the posterior relations of third part of the duodenum clearly. This right psoas muscle, inferior vena cava, aorta and also right gonadal vessels. Fourth part of the duodenum lying on left psoas muscle and left lumbar sympathetic trunk to reach the lower board of body of the pancreas. Ends at duodenal jejunal flexure and fixed to the left psoas fascia by suspensory muscles of duodenum. These are the anterior and posterior relations of fourth part of duodenum. Anteriorly, the fourth part of the duodenum is related to transverse colon and the transverse mesocolon. Posteriorly, left psoas muscle, left sympathetic chain, left gonadal vessels and inferior inferior mesenteric veins. Superiorly, the fourth part of the duodenum is related to body of the pancreas. From left side, left kidney and left ureter and right side, the upper part of root of the mesentery. When we look at the internal structure of the duodenum, the mucous membrane is thrown into numerous circular folds. These circular folds are called as plicae circularis or valvular conventis. But the wall of first 2.5 cm, that means the duodenal cap, mucosa is smooth and no plicae circular. In this picture you can see there are large circular folds in the lumen and these are called as plicae circularis. Duodenum is supplied by mainly superior and inferior pancreatic or duodenal artery. The first, first two, two centimeters of the duodenum has blood supply from hepatic, gastroduodenal, right gastric and right gastroepiploic arteries. These are the branches of celiac trunk. The venous drainage to the duodenum is by tributaries of superior mesentric and portal. In this picture you can see the blood supply of the duodenum. 
the first part of the duodenum first 2 cm has various blood sup supply from the celiac trunk which is the large one of the large branches of aorta and this is the gastroduodenal artery which is originated from the hepatic artery and hepatic artery is a branch of celiac trunk so the abdominal aorta celiac trunk starts from the abdominal aorta and the main branch of celiac trunk is hepatic artery from this hepatic artery the gastroduodenal artery arises and from the gastroduodenal artery there are it gives a branch called pancreatic or duodenal artery the superior pancreatic or duodenal artery this is the superior pancreatic or duodenal artery and also the superior mesenteric artery which is the one of the main branches of the abdominal aorta from the superior mesenteric artery the inferior pancreatic or duodenal artery arises so the superior pancreatic or duodenal artery and the inferior pancreatic or duodenal arteries are the main blood supply to the duodenum let's discuss about the jejunum and ileum before starting the jejunum and ileum you should know what is the root of mesentery the root of mesentery is 15 centimeters long it is it arises it it extends from duodeno jejunal junction to the left of the second lumbar vertebra and it passes obliquely downwards to the right sacroiliac joint and that contains superior mesenteric vessels and limb nodes draining to the small gut and autonomic very sorry for putting that picture to your presentation the dotted area dotted lines you can see this is the root of mesentery there are some characteristic features to the jejunum and ileum look at this chart the usual length of jejunum and ileum is 6.5 meters and jejunum is the second part of small intestine which is deeper red than the ileum and also the wall of the jejunum is more thick more thicker than the ileum and also the when discuss about the vascular supply to the jejunum the jejunum has greater blood supply than the ileum and the vasa recta vasa recta of jejunum is long longer than the ileum and arcades of jejunum are less than less, less amount than the ileum the mesentery when discuss about the mesentery of the jejunum it has less fat content than the ileum as ileum ileal mesentery has more fat we can't see clearly the arcades of the ileum we can't see clearly look at this picture you can see the jejunum and ileum the there are one or two arterial arcades of jejunum but in ileum there are four five or numerous arterial arcades and the mesentery of the ileum has more fat but jejunum has less fat also the peritoneal folds 
sorry and also the vasa recta of the the ilium is are shorter than the jejunum these are the vasa recta of the jejunum vasa recta means the vasa recta are start start from the arterial arcades and supply to the jejunum as well as the ileum and also the wall of the, the jejunum is more thicker than the ileum and a jejunum has less limb than the ileum this is the jejunum it has thicker wall and long vasa recta and few arterial arcades this is the ileum which is paler color than jejunum and also it has more numerous arterial arcades and also short vasa recta the mesentery of the ileum has more fat than the jejunum when we discuss about blood supply to the jejunum and ileum it is given by the jejunal and ileal branches from superior mesenteric artery these branches enter the mesentery by passing between the two layers of root of the mesentery jejunal branches joined each other in series of anastomosing loops these are called as arterial arcades and single arcade at lower end double at the lower end from these arcades the straight arteries are begins begin these are end arteries that pass to the mesenteric border of the gut these vessels these vessels forms the form windows of the intestinal border of the mesentery and uh, in the ileum sorry uh, in jejunum you can see these straight arteries clearly due to low fat in the mesentery ileal branches have large series of arcades but shorter straight arteries or vasa recta the windows are not seen clearly due to high fat content of the mesentery and end of the superior mesenteric artery and anastomosis with the arcades and with the ileocolic branch that supply to the terminal ileum this is the blood supply to the jejunum and ileum given by the superior mesenteric artery the jejunal and ileal arteries begin from the superior mesenteric artery this is the superior mesenteric artery venous drainage is correspond to the arteries and drains to superior mesenteric vein limb drainage jejunum and ileal nodes that drain to superior mesenteric nodes nerve supply to the jejunum and ileum by parasympathetic vagal supply that regulate the secretion and peristalsis sympathetic supply is given by the lateral segments of t9 and t10 these are the limb nodes lymphatic spread of small intestine these jejunal and ileal limb nodes ultimately limb end up with and these limb enters enter to the thoracic duct let's discuss about the large intestine the average length of large intestine is 1.5 meters that consists of the cecum with the appendix and the ascending transverse descending and sigmoid part of the colon 
and the rectum and anal canal. When we talk about the general appearance of the large intestine, there are two main structures. First one is the appendices epiploike. The appendices epiploike are fat filled peritoneal tags on the surface of large intestine. There are numerous appendices epiploike you can see in sigmoid colon on the sigmoid colon but not in cecum and tinea coli are three flattened bands commencing at the base of appendix and running to the length of large intestine to the to end at rectosigmoid junction these tinea coli are not seen in appendix and rectum The tinea coli represent the great bulk of longitudinal muscle of large bubble. Because of the tinea are because of the tinea uh, that are approximately 30 centimeters shorter than the gut. Therefore, the colon becomes condensed into its typical circulated appearance. These circulations you can see in plain radiograph of abdomen when the large bowel is distended and appear as incomplete septa projecting into the gas shadow. This is the parts of large intestine. This is the ileum which is the terminal part of small intestine that opens into the cecum. This worm like structure is called as appendix and this is the cecum area. This is ascending colon and horizontal part is called as transverse colon and this is the descending colon and last part is sigmoid colon, rectum and the anal canal. This band is this band is called as tinea coli and yellow colored fat contained structures are called as appendices epiploike. The transverse and sigmoid colon are intraperitoneal structures. And also the ascending and descending colon have no mesocolon. They, they are directly adhere to the posterior abdominal wall. Cecum may or may not have, uh, may not be completely peritonealized. Appendix has its own mesentery which is called as append. Append mesentery of the appendix. Cecum is blind pouch that projects downwards from the commencement of the ascending colon and it is usually completely covered with the peritoneum. Ileocecal junction is guarded by the ileocecal where it has transverse slips that prevent some reflux into ileum. Blood supply to the ileum is given by the ileocolic artery. This is the structure of the cecum. The tinea coli of the cecum lie one anterior, one posterior medial and one posterior lateral. All three converge on the base of the appendix. This is the base of the appendix and to which they are a useful guide. To detect, to identify the cecum. The ileocecal junction is guarded by the ileocecal valve. It is almost transverse valve and it guarded by the transverse lips. 
So this is the ileocecal valve and the transverse lips are called as ileocecal folds. The appendix arises from posteromedial aspect of the cecum which is approximately 1 inch below the ileocecal valve. Average length of the appendix ranges from 0.5 inches to 9 inches and there are various positions of the appendix. The most common position is retrocecal position and also retrocolic, retroilial and preilial, subsecal and pelvic appendix you can see. This is the image of the positions of appendix. The retro, retrocecal position that means behind the cecum which is the commonest site and also retrocolic that means the that means behind the colon and also retroilial and preilial. Retroilial means behind the ilium and preilial means in front of the ilium and also subsecal and pelvic. The subsecal means below the cecum and also in some situations the appendix is situated at the pelvic region. Therefore it is called as pelvic appendix. The mesentery of the appendix is also called as mesoappendix which is triangular fold of peritoneum that contains appendicular branch of ileocolic artery. It descends behind the ileum as a triangular fold. The ileocecal fold it is also called as bloodlet, bloodless fold of trevis passes to the appendix or the base of the cecum from the front of the ileum. Remember that the appendicitis is uncommon at extremes of age. Appendicitis means an inflammation of the appendix. Why it is uncommon in extremes of lives? The lumen of the appendix is relatively wide in infants and also in elderly the lumen of the appendix is frequently com completely obliterated. The main cause of appendicitis is the obstruction of appendix lumen. Because of that case the appendicitis is uncommon at extremes of age. The blood supply to the appendix is given by appendicular artery which is the branch of inferior division of ileocolic artery. It represents the entire vascular supply to the appendix and this appendicular artery initially runs in the edge of appendicular mesentery and appendicular mesentery and distally along the wall of the appendix. Remember that the appendicular artery is an end artery. In this picture you can see this is the ileocolic artery. From the inferior division of ileocolic artery the appendicular artery starts. And later the appendicular artery go along the wall of the appendix. This is the root of the me mesentery of the appendix. In acute appendicitis can cause thrombosis of the appendicular artery as it is an end artery and lead, as it is an end artery the appendix undergo rapid gangrene and gangrene formation and perforation. The lymphatic drainage of the appendix that passes to nodes associated with ileum. Let's discuss about the colon. As I mentioned earlier, colon has four parts ascending, transverse, descending, and sigmoid. This is the ascending part of the 
colon this is transverse part and this is descending part in between this transverse and ascending colon there is a flexure which is called as right colic flexure as well as hepat and also it is called as hepatic flexure in between the transverse colon and descending colon the is a flexure is called as left colic flexure and also it is called as splenic flexure ascending colon is 15 cm long starting from ilocecal junction to the right colic flexure and it lies on the iliac fascia and anterior layer of the lumbar fascia the tinea coli present on anteriorly posteriorly and also posterior medially circulated appearance is given by the by these three tinea transverse colon is 45 cm long starting from the hepatic flexure to this splenic flexure and it is completely invested by the peritoneum and hangs on the transverse mesocolon the transverse mesocolon attaches attached from the inferior pole of the right kidney across the descending part of the duodenum and pancreas to inferior pole of the left kidney appendices epiploicae are larger and numerous than ascending descending colon is less than 30 cm long and starting from the splenic flexure to the pelvic to the pelvic brim and attaches to the posterior abdominal wall the phrenico colic ligament attaches the splenic flexure to the diaphragm at the level of 10th and 11th rib from the, uh, the descending colon starts from descending colon to the commencement of the rectum it is less than 45 cm long and completely invested in peritoneum and hangs on a free on the mesentery called as sigmoid mesocolon it has three tinea coli these are wider than elsewhere of the colon when we discuss about the blood supply to the colon the proximal two third of blood sub the colon is given by iliac colic right colic and middle colic branches from the superior mesenteric artery and distal one third of the colon is supplied by left colic and sigmoid branches of inferior mesenteric artery the anastomotic branches near the margin of all colon form a marginal artery and from the marginal artery the short vessels run into the gut wall in this picture you can see the superior mesenteric artery and inferior mesenteric artery these are the main two branches that arise from abdominal aorta from superior mesenteric artery right colic artery middle colic and iliac colic ileal branches are given for proximal 2/3 of the colon is supplied by this iliac colic right colic middle colic branches that arise from superior mesenteric artery and distal one third of the colon is supplied by left colic and sigmoid branches uh, that arise from inferior mesenteric artery these are the these these are the marginal branches marginal branches 
located near the margins of all corals. Veins are correspond to the arteries and reach the portal vein via superior mesenteric vein or inferior mesenteric vein. There is some anastomosis between portal and systemic venous drainage where the ascending and descending colon are in contact with posterior abdominal wall. This is one of portosystemic anastomosis site. You can we will discuss more about this portosystemic anastomosis on a separate lecture. Limb channels follows, follow arteries and drains to superior mesenteric and inferior mesenteric. In this picture you can see the limb, limb drainage follows the artery. Nerve supply to the colon. They are a sympathetic as well as parasympathetic nerve supply to the colon. Parasympathetic nerve supply is given by vagus and pelvic splanchnic nerves because intestine is derived from both mid and hind gut. The sympathetic supply to the colon is given by spinal cord segments of T10 to L2. If you have any problems or need to clarify some things regarding the lecture, you can ask from me anytime. This is the assignment. All students should submit this, this assignment via Moodle on or before 25th of November 2000. Thank you.